Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game War of Civilizations. This game takes about two to three hours, plays ages 10 and up, and three to six players. And in the game War of Civilizations, you are playing as one of the six different animal stylized tribes in an Earth uh, about 2050. And basically what's happened is climate change and global warming has taken effect in the world, the ocean levels have risen, uh, and changed the way the climate has functioned. Uh, there's certain types of crystal water that is now used to energize everything. Uh, trees have gained the ability to like manufacture aluminum and you're going to be utilizing these resources to build war machines. Your clan is going to face up to other clans attempting to raid their islands as well as trying to get to the fabled uh, island of myth. And what's going to happen is you're going to be uh, building and constructing war machines, gathering clans and tribes and breaching your island to the, f that, to the form of which you're going to get gather all of the different locations on the island, thusly opening the middle area up and thusly being able to control the, the area of myth. And what happens is once that, that triggers, there's a countdown phase. And depending on the length of the game that you choose to play, after five or three rounds, the game is going to end. And whoever has this wonderful thing at the end of the game is going to be the winner. However, there's one other way the game ends. You know what that one is? Yeah, if you control the most island. And no one has the uh, island of myth, then the game will end in your favor as well. There's also a little expansion which we'll include in the game and talk about how it's played. We'll first show you the basic setup, then we're going to go through how the rules work, and then finally our review. So War of Civilizations is actually pretty easy to set up, and it plays at least three players. And what happens is everybody's going to get a character card, and then... The character card will show what resources you'll get, and you'll also have nine small ships and one medium ship. And then you're also going to get four of these clan tokens. So after you've got your resources, you've got your ships and your clan tokens, then you're going to go ahead and set up the board. You'll pull out the whole board down, you're going to place the Isle of Myth in the middle, set out all the resources within reach of all players, you're going to shuffle the uh, Catastrophe deck, you're going to place the turn counter on round one, and then you're going to have all the resources players are going to utilize, whether they be their different types of ships and their different types of clans, and of course their character card with its unique special ability, and you'll begin placement. How placement works is you're going to start with your little starter island here. It's going to be a little green area. It's going to be the smaller island of your specific colored island. And you're going to begin by placing units there. And in addition, you can place outwards up to two more times. So they have to be connected and it's going to be three total islands. Once you've got your three islands, you'll place any number of units in any different areas you'd like, whether it be the three ship or all the one ships and the clan tokens. And the clan tokens will each go in a different area of the board, whether it be for aluminum, whether it be for the water crystals or for ammunition. And you want to kind of create a variety of resources in order to uh, be able to gather more throughout your turn. Once everybody's got their different areas on the board, and of course the Isle of Myth is set up, then if you want you can include the expansion. The expansion is going to allow you to have a unique area where you can buy new things like teleporters uh, that you can move from island to island. You'll have your own unique safe haven that you can buy, and of course you're going to have power cards and character upgrade cards that will increase your powers uh, of your faction as you play throughout the game. And then you're basically ready to go. It's a really quick, quick setup, really pretty straightforward and simple. Okay, so this game has a turn-based structure, and at the end of the round, something unique is going to happen, which is, generally speaking, going to be a card that can... What does it basically do, those nasty cards? Oh, the event, basically? Yeah. Like, wipes out your clan or your ships. In a specific home. continent, so it could be yeah. just one specific player that gets completely nuked off the face of the Earth. Not fully, but like... It's, half. Yeah, half. <laughs> Half of everything is possible. So you get your round, your turn tracker, and what's going to basically happen is everybody's going to take a turn uh, based on the actions that they're going to have, and then you're going to move that turn counter down. And you'll keep doing that up until the point where uh, it hits the 15, or somebody uh, gets their full island, goes to the middle area, and gathers that Isle of Myth. And when that happens, that timer goes to the countdown tracker, which goes from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 for a long game, or 3, 2, 1 uh, for a shorter game. And at the end of the game there, basically whoever has it is the winner, or if no one has it, whoever has the most islands. Now, on your turn, you can do actions. How many actions can you do a turn? Three. Three. And then you can buy another one. Yes. So what happens is you're going to be able to take three different actions. And these actions are listed down here below, which is also included in the little expansion pack, which is highly needed. I, you need these player references. It's really nice. The base game comes with one here. 
uh, which is extremely long and lengthy. We'll get to that in the review. But this here is really, really useful. So the first thing is going to be hiring a clan member. It's really easy. You're going to spend 1k water crystals. You'll take one of your little clan marker tokens, these guys here, and you'll place it on any location that you currently occupy. You're occupying a space as long as you have a ship there. And uh, when you place it, you can choose any of the three different resource locations there, as long as there's not already a clan member there. And uh, that's basically the action. It's going to be used for gathering more resources, the three different types. And then we're going to go ahead and buy ships. How do you buy a ship? You spend uh, 4K blue, 4K white for a small one. Yep. And then the medium size is 7 and 7. And then the big one is 10 and 10. Yeah, and it gets really big. It's 1, 3, and 6. And those are the power of the ships for how you're going to be defeating your opponents. But on the offside, there's also a cost in order to use them for attacking. And it's going to be ammunition. So when you move them into a location with an adjacent enemy, you're going to have to pay ammunition. And uh, it's, what is it for each one of them? So for the small ship, it's 1. The medium is 3. And the large one is... Four. Oh, just kidding. Four. It's one, one two, two, and four. four. Yeah. And you'll be using that. And it tells you how much damage they have. It's basically just their power. Uh, if you don't want to buy a ship, you can instead collect resources, which is very important, especially early game. Uh, collecting resources is pretty simple. You'll look at all of your different colonies um, or tribes, and you're going to collect the thousands of resources based on the different uh, types. So in this case here, if I've got two on this area here, the left-hand side, and it's 4K, 4K, I would get 8K of these water crystals or ocean crystals. And then for ammunition, yeah, I have none there, and so I would get zero, and then, or actually, I, I do have, I have 3K, so I get 3K. Mm -hmm. And then for the... Um, Aluminium? Am I saying that aluminum right? Aluminum wood. Uh, aluminum, aluminium. I, I, maybe, maybe it's based on the, the state or a country. Uh, you get 5k. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I could be wrong. You can ask the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that's pretty much it. You'll gather all the resources based on where your calling is you're at, and you'll add it to your little pool or supply. And you start with a supply at the beginning of the game based on your character. Uh, the next one here is to move a ship. It's pretty simple. Yeah, you can move a ship or multiple ships from one space to an adjacent space. Yeah, and usually uh, it's going to be to try and control a new area. You always want to leave at least one ship on the previous area, otherwise you will lose control of that area. And if you have no ships in an area, you have no control of the area, and thusly you will lose your clans on those areas. So it's important to at least keep one ship, if not more. Uh, there's also redistribution. Now this actually happens at the end of your turn for free, but you can also do it as an action. And all that means is that any connecting islands that you have that are adjacent within the entire board, you can move around your ships to kind of reallocate how the different types of uh, boats are structured. So if you have three and three and one, you can move one and one over to the one that has one, and now you have a two, two, and a three. So it kind of divides out equally. And you can do that during your turn as an action or at the end of your turn. And then the final one here is going to be buying a special card. Now that's for the expansion mostly. And there's different types of cards. You have like power cards, you have like 2.0 and 3.0 character cards, you have teleportation uh, tiles that let you move from one area to area. And then you'll have these special safe havens that you can kind of set off to the side. And as long as you control your area, you'll be able to place guys here and you won't lose resources and valuable commodities there. Um, and it works very similar to buying boats, right? You're going to basically be spending currency mm -hmm. uh, to buy the different things. And it tells you on here what the costs are. It, it, it's that simple. Um, so on your turn, you'll take those three different actions. And then if you want, there's a special action. How does that work? You can spend 4K, right? 5K. 5K to oh, these do... These water crystals. Another action. Yes. But if you control your entire continent, then you can do that action for free. Yeah, so it's three actions on your turn, or four if you pay 5k or have your continent. And then you redistribute, right? Mm -hmm. And that ends your turn. Anything else? Was I missing something? That's it. Okay. Uh, after your turn's over, you move to the next player's turn. They'll rinse and repeat that option until all players are done. Then you'll move that turn tracker down one space. So good. And then on the, on the second round, uh, what's going to happen is players are going to get one free uh, power one ship and a free colony to place on any location they're currently at. And that will happen for the rest of the remaining rounds of the game. On the third round, you're going to be drawing these cards, I believe. Uh, these cards are like tsunamis and whatnot. These are the ones we talked about that are really mm -hmm. nasty. And on the fourth round, whoop, whoop, then you're able to enter this area here, provided what one thing you have to do first. 
You have to control your whole continent. Yeah, so if you have your whole continent and it's the fourth rounder after that, you can move into these special zones, which you will then be able to move into the middle zone and take control of the island of myth, which will then trigger the countdown. Now, this can happen at any point in the game after the fourth round. If you want to go fast, you can or not. But the countdown will also be based on the length of play. You can play a shorter game for a three-round countdown or a longer game for a five-round countdown. And whoever has the Island of Myth or has the most islands without the Island of Myth, if it's not available, is the winner of the game. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a couple little things that are involved with combat um, that we can talk about now as well, I suppose. Uh, how combat works is pretty simple. When you move on to a space, because you're moving from location to location based on arrows, or when you're going between ports, you'll have to go to a harbor first. And when you enter a space with an opponent, an opposing ship or faction, you're going to add your power versus their power. You're gonna to have to spend ammunition based on the cost of the ammunition, and whoever has the highest power wins. The winner will destroy the other fleet, and um, if that fleet happened to be the controlling uh, island, uh, any of their colonies will go away and one of them will be replaced with your colony. So it's a way of kind of getting additional locations. And it's all about brute strength and having the ammunition in order to be able to successfully take control of the area. So even if you have a ton of ships but don't have the ammunition cost, it's basically like you could only use ships based on how much ammunition that you currently have. And uh, I think that's pretty much all there is to the game. Uh, we'll talk about some more interesting stuff and all the extra little things in the review, which we'll go through right now. All right, so let's review War of uh, Civilizations. The first thing I want to mention is this game comes from India. It's the second game I reviewed from India that is really, really good quality. Uh, the first one was called, oh man, I don't even want to butcher the name. I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description uh, so you can check out that one. Really, really cool. Oh, uh, Shasan. Azadi, that was the first one, and this is the second one here. And we'll, we'll go through quality of components. Uh, so this game here has a really nice board, and uh, you can see everything pretty well. Uh, color coding is a little bit of a challenge. Now, I understand why they did it, because they wanted to have each of the different colors represented, but I would have preferred the resources to all be the same color, and just have the outside of the board show your color, and I think that would be enough information uh, to get by with that. Uh, the, 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 the movable gunboats work very well. They show the cost, it, show, it shows the, 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 the power, and uh, the size of them is also inherently pretty simple to understand. You can only have seven different boats on your space, that works, and the colonies and where they place. Uh, and I thought originally there might be an issue with how many pieces are going to be on the board, like how hard it would be to like get eight, you know, these amount of gunboats and these amount of gunboats, but it was never actually a problem for us, so uh, kudos for that. Uh, our work is pretty solid. Uh, this game is going to be kind of like one of those, uh, it kind of reminds me of like one of those like 19 like late 90s video game style uh, artwork as far as the cards go but then uh, you have the really high detailed terrain artwork on the board so i prefer the terrain artwork on the board for sure but the character design isn't bad either um only one thing I guess I can say is paper money. Uh, it's basically paper money. It's like really thin and there's a ton of denominations. Uh, this could have been uh, tightened up a little bit more, I think. So you have less currency that you need to utilize. Uh, maybe even just getting rid of the 1Ks and making sure that everything was just a 2K denomination or higher would have been nice. But uh, it's not that big of a deal and it was pretty easy to pay for everything and it's not really paper money It's at least thicker than the monopoly money, which I appreciate So that probably be my only really big ding on the quality the box is nice all the different player aids are nice one of the player aids is like super, super in-depth and uh, gives you a ton of tips and stuff as well, uh, which is good, but I would prefer to also have a small player aid just to show me what my actions are, how much everything costs on the back side, and that way I, when I want to look at the bigger one, that'd come in handy. Would you agree? Yeah, the player reference guide is definitely massive, and I mostly only used it to see what the types of actions were. Yeah, I mean, it has rules of warfare here. It talks about the end game, the central island myth, and over here it's got tips uh, for planning actions and type of actions and turns. Really, it doesn't need the objective. It just needs your actions um, and maybe in like a couple sentences on one, on one side of a card and on the other side it just needs to have the cost. The cost. This yeah. whole thing could be on a card minus this, just your, the type of, maybe not even the actions, just, just the costs. Because mm -hmm. that was the main thing we kept look, having to look up is the costs. Um, 
but otherwise I don't have much else to say about the quality. I mean, even still, like they gave us a ton of different resources that we can utilize. There's a quick start guide. There's two different rule books that were very easy to understand and read through. And there's also a nice tutorial on how the game is played online, which I will also link for you guys. Uh, let's talk about the theme. Did you feel like you were your own clan uh, warring against opposing clans, attempting to get to the middle of the board to get to the island? Like, what was your strategy? What did it feel like as far as my exa my d explanation of the theme of the game? Yeah, um, I like the theme. Um, I think one thing that uh, was an advantage to me and not to you and Callie was that I was all the way on the other side of the board and had no one around me, but you guys were next to each other. So that kind of sucked for you guys. Yeah. So... I don't know, maybe you have to like plan ahead and decide where your continent should be instead of just picking a color. Yeah, maybe instead it should be for each number of players. In a three player game, it's just these three locations in like a mm -hmm. triangle, that way everybody's spaced out. And in a four player game, it's these two and these two, so that way only two people are opposing each other. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. In a five-player mm -hmm. game, I guess somebody's just going to be stuck in the middle and they need to do some, like, you can you can at least haggle with people and talk to people. But, yeah, but yeah it definitely would have been better if we actually would make sure. And I, I don't, I, I think I looked at the rules where you just pick one, but I could be wrong. But either way, I know for sure that there's not a specific setup for the number of players, which I think would actually be uh, better as well. Mm -hmm. But me and Callie did try and team up a little bit to try and push the middle of the board to stop Alicia from just gaining resources all by, all by her lonesome and like controlling all that side of the board because nobody could deal with her because she was all the way over there. Um, so there is a little bit of social strategy when it comes to that as well. But yeah, I felt like I was playing my little tribe. I have my different, there's different characters. There's like meerkats and like rhinos and, and whatnot. Uh, tigers and uh, you're utilizing your forces to move around the board. Most tribes all function the same, but they do have a unique ability. And the, like for instance, mine was you can get back any one gunboat if you lose one in like a disaster or a battle and you can put it back anywhere you want on your board. Uh, you can also buy upgrades uh, in the expansion, which I highly suggest. It gives you like a bonus thing. So here I can take this Creos number 2.0 and now it says get a gunboat damage power extra for every two ships in an attack fleet so you're gonna get additional damage and then you can move to 3.0 if you want and there's a cost to these guys so it kind of makes your characters more distinguishable or more indistinguishable whatever the one is where it's not the same as everybody else's which i really like and then it has power cards uh for battle uh, i like how battle is very like reduced in random random randomization there's not like a bunch of die rolling it's basically whoever has the most power and resources which i'll get into the ammunition later but uh, these kind of add some interesting things. These cards will like double your power. Now to any one action, you can double it. You can block attacks and whatnot, which is kind of a nice little twist to how combat can work. Um, but yeah, for combat, what do you think about the combat of the game? It was definitely, you had to get your six ships for sure, the big ships. Yes. If you only have ones, you're probably not gonna get anywhere. And, yeah, exactly. Not only that, but when I first played combat in this game, I was like, oh, I'm not really like digging the idea of just, I have five, you have four, I win, you lose yeah. everything, and I get everything. But I started to kind of grasp how certain things are balanced in this game, and it comes down to ammunition. Now, yes, I might be able to easily defeat your army, but it's going to cost me a heck of a lot more ammunition than it would the other player. Mm -hmm. And if I have no ammunition and I have a ton of fleets, I'm going to get rolled because I'm not going to be able to defend myself. And it's what happened at the end of the game for me. I actually had the largest, most producing valued area on the board, but that did not matter because I had no ammunition. I had a ton of like boats and whatnot, but I cannot, I couldn't do anything because I was out of ammunition and it was the end of the round there. And so I was like, oh, I see the downfall of not not taking my time to gather the resources to protect the areas and kind of make these alliances and whatnot. I just thought I could brute force it because I had a better starting area, sort of, than the other players. My area was smaller but produced more resources, which also came down to me having less areas at the end of the game when no one controlled the island of myth, and thusly, Alicia and Callie had a much higher likelihood of having more islands controlled and thusly beating me out, which they, they both did, in fact. I was able to get the island of the myth, but I could not hold it because I did not have the resources to defend against two smaller tribes coming at me from different angles, uh, which was kind of a unique twist. Like, because at first I'm like, oh, I win, I win, I win. How are you guys going to beat me? And I'm like, oh, I have no more ammunition left. And now I'm in trouble. 
<laughs> and, and, and that's kind of a nice little balancing act to the game. But I would still like to see a little bit of randomization added to the combat. Even if it's just a singular die that gives you like one, two, or a three that you can roll, that can kind of change the tide of battle. I do normally like games like Cthulhu Wars that have like very straightforward combat uh, but each of those has individual unique abilities. So maybe either boats with unique abilities or like I said, mm -hmm. these action cards presenting like a bonus, like maybe a hidden uh, uh, hidden cards for every, everybody has like oh, uh, a certain number of attack cards they can add to the battle if they want, but those are all they get in the game. Uh, that would probably be another little suggestion I think would be cool. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, overall, uh, this game is actually really, really engaging. I really, really enjoyed playing it. I really enjoyed trying to determine how the game was balanced and what was going on and like feeling like you have this advantage and then realizing that you do not have it uh, starts changing how you play and how you want to gather um spacing out's really cool and giving players the opportunity to realize what you're doing uh, can change the flow of, and course of battle as well there's communication in the game which has some social aspects to it and overall it was just a really fun experience the game didn't take as long as i thought for a three-player experience especially when we played the short mode i think it took us maybe like an hour and a half to play um, with the countdown of three as opposed to five. But I would definitely suggest this game uh, plays best at five and six players. We play the additional, after me and her, Callie played, we play the additional ways and with more players. And yes, more players involves more strategy. It involves uh, unique decisions and uh, cooperation that you will not see in a smaller played game. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this game. This is a really cool little war combat game that's very straightforward and very simplistic as to what you can do, but has a lot of different choices and uh, different actions that you can take. So uh, War of Civilization is, is going to get a thumbs up from me. Yeah, I liked the variety of different actions that you could take, and I liked that you could spend more resources to take another action. Yeah, you get the uh, uh, the option opportunity of spending those resources. And mm -hmm. it's kind of funny, too. You could spend that 5K resources for the extra action, which then lets you get more resources. So that was really, really cool. Yeah. I'm like, oh, is, it, is that broken? I'm like, wait, no, everybody can do that. But then you lose out on the action that you might want to take, like attacking yeah. or moving or gathering certain locations. Yeah. And I also do really love that um, if you only have your one little ship and someone else has their big ships... You can choose to spend your ammunition, so they have to spend their ammunition too, so. If I move in with five sixes and she has a one there, I have to utilize ammunition with my sixes in order to defeat her one. Now she can choose not to use that ammunition, and if she doesn't, I won't, and she'll lose. But if she does, I am out a ton, which happened in that game uh, a few times to me, even though I had more resources overall, because I kept attacking with large. You have to really be strategic uh, when thinking about where you want to go. So yes, anyway, War of Civilizations, if you'd like to take a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description for you to pick it up. It's a recommendation for me. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review uh, for the game War of Civilizations. Like I said, there's a link below. You can also go ahead and what to the channel? Subscribe. And hit that notification. That's right, and uh, see more videos we produce. Uh, my computer exploded, my graphics card, like four days ago, five days ago, so I was literally unable to produce videos um, until literally today. So hooray, uh, we'll be having more videos out this week, every day, and also our live stream will come back this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play games just like this one here. Um, I don't think I've got many other updates other than hooray, I'm back online once again. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to pick an outro. Warring with civilizations with you next time.